Hi, it's Ileana here at Awakening Cosmic Reality Show, and today I have Patricia Mona with me. Hi, Patricia. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Patricia is a psychic. She's a healer, and today we're going to talk to her about her beautiful work that she does. Aw, thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for coming on. I saw your beautiful new uh, crystal grid energy grid on your wall in your meditation. Did you want to see it? Yes, please. I, I still have my chair in there from doing the nightly meditations online. Um, so it's kind of messy, but I'll show you. Yeah. It's, it's, I love it. And I, I channeled in new information when I redid my space, when I did Reynolds. And so I can't quite move the angel wings that are in front of it. But so this is it. So there's the angel wing amethyst, but yeah, you can see that it goes all the way to the top and bottom and all the way across. And the energy in the room in here is awesome. Usually this guy is over there. So the room is gridded as well. This is my meditation studio. Um, and then I've got a huge chunk of selenite right there that can you see it that yeah. has um the sacred geometry sitting on top just to kind of amplify the energy in the room in here mm -hmm. so yeah that is it keep the angel wings right behind the grid it says it wants to live there ah that's what i thought too when we just did that i've got i've got grids throughout my whole place in here even in, even where i do readings in my room if you look in all my corners I've got my my stones and my organite generators and things like that just to bridge of the room and then even underneath the chair that um there's a big slab of selenite under there so that this is this is the chair where all my clients sit for psychic readings so they get healed and they don't even know it yeah cool Sneak it wherever I can. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I, I basically kind of like stumbled onto you organically. Yes. I, I saw your meditation. I'm like, she just switched out her grid for this new one. The energy was amazing. So I'm like, I need to talk to you and I need to ask you, how do your psychic abilities work? Well, um... First off, I, when people ask me, like, when did you realize you were psychic? It's like, now, when did I come to the realization that you guys aren't or the average person doesn't see? So I didn't really even realize that my reality was any different than anyone else's. I would just look at people and go, what's wrong with you? How did you not know that? Like, it's right there. And it was, so I was a palliative oncology nurse for 13 years. And when I was nursing, um, I noticed that illness has vibration, death has a vibration, and I could feel it. And the more um, I delved into my own spirituality, the, the more I realized that these feelings that I was feeling or these sensations meant something. And if I paid attention to them, it would steer me where I needed to go. And it's the same thing within a person's body. Illness has a vibration. So, and I'm very, very sensitive to energy. So even when I scan someone, they don't even need to be in the room. As long as I have an image in my head of who that is, I can tell you where the energy breaks are. And I can tell you what's going on, whether it's high blood pressure, cholesterol, cancer. Um, I think that my nursing just prepared me for what it was that I was doing later because there have been people where I had a lady a few years ago where um, I scanned her and she's wearing a pair of jeans and I said to her, I go, you have a mole on your left shin. I said, that has to go. And she looked at me like I was crazy. She goes, I just got back from the dermatologist and you know, he searched me from head to toe. I'm not, I'm good. And I went back and I looked, I said, no, you need, you've got a mole there. You need to get it checked. And um, she let it go, you know, and then about two months later, my words kept haunting her. And so she made the appointment just to go back and get it checked because she did notice that there was a mole in the area that I said, 
And sure enough, it was a very fast, aggressive cancer where like all the skin, her scar is about this big on her shin. And it, it was, it could have very easily gone into the bone. Like had she not gone in when she did, it would have, she could have lost her leg. So, but instead she's still left with a nasty scar, but it was my words. Right. And for me, it was because I could feel the energy break when I came down to her leg if that makes sense. So yeah, it, it, to me, it all depends on, I guess, how sensitive a person is to energy. We all know what a good mood feels like. We all know what a bad mood feels like, right? Well, and then we also know when there's people that we're drawn to or people that repel us, that's all energy. It's all in our aura. So if you know how to be able to read energy on a person, there's nothing that you can't know, especially if a person's full of crap, you can see it coming. Yeah. No, that makes perfect sense. I mean, when we just started talking, you were scanning me and I was scanning you. Yeah, because it's fun. And we, we saw some interesting things in our bodies that we discussed. So that was, that was cool. Um, we don't need to go into the detail what we saw that's private. But like you told me something that you don't even know about me because you've never met me before. Like, first time. This is my job. <laughs> yes, it's your job. It's like first time. You don't know me. Like, I didn't tell you that stuff. Yeah. Well, it just, it comes. Like, when it, medicine has just always been one of the things that has always interested me and in how the, the mind worked and the body worked. And I never understood people who didn't want to know because it was like, I want to know why I'm feeling the way I am or why that person, how I can help them, you know, um, to get back into where they should be energetically. Uh, so I think, I think that that is a gift, I guess, um, or part of this. And the cool thing about learning how to sense death in a hospice, because I, I jumped into nursing at 19, like fresh out of, the, out of school and learning what death felt like is how I track missing people. So I understand why the universe made me do nursing first, even though I've always been psychic. Uh, I had no idea that I'd be able to find missing people, but it, to me, it's easy. It comes almost like memory where I can see it happening. I know what happened. Um, there's so many different techniques that I use in order to locate a missing person. I don't know if you wanted me to go into that stuff. Yes. <laughs> I don't know where you wanted me to go. <laughs> yes, please. Tell us what the techniques are and how is it done? Um, so there's many different ways that I had no idea that I was even doing naturally. So remote viewing is extremely easy to me, but I don't do it in the systematic approach that they teach. So I, I went to the, I, um, I was taught by Paul Elder at the Remote Institute. God love him. I love him. He's, he's a dear friend of mine. And but he teaches a systematic approach where you are supposed to describe what the, what the target is. So you describe it using your five senses. What do you see, smell, taste, touch, hear, right? Um, but for me, and then you're supposed to write it all down. And you're not supposed to write, um, you're not supposed to say, okay, if we'll say the target is a big blue garbage bin. You're not supposed to say, um, it's a blue garbage bin. You're supposed to go, it's cold, it's metal, it's outside. You're supposed to use the descriptive words. Well, for me, I see where the bin is. I'll find it on the map, walk up to it, look inside and tell you what's inside of it. Cause I, it unfolds like a story for me. So the actual systematic approach of remote viewing, I don't really know how to do that because I just see the whole thing and go, oh my God, it's the Titanic. That happened in the class where, you know, the target was the Titanic and it could have been anything. A person, place, or thing in the entire universe. Um, I'll show you. I have my little bragging folder. Hold on. I'll show you. Right here. So, for example, oh, this is a good remote viewing um, thing. So I did the Wimberley, Texas floods in 2015. Um, eight people went missing. A house went down. It was, it was like a house on stilts by the river and the river flooded and the house went, the whole house went down with everyone in it. And right from the get go, I told search and rescue, I'll be able to find six of them because I can sense six. I can't six, sense the other two. 
to this date, no one has ever located the other two bodies. They're gone. And I don't think anyone ever will. Um, but how I did this, so what I got to do is I got to take what I see in my head and I have to then match it on Google Earth. I need to drop a pen and tell search and rescue where to search. Well, if you look, this is where the bodies were found. Mm -hmm. That's where I told them to search. Is there a gorge there of some sort? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. This was back from like 2015. But if you look, like they're exact. Like this is where I dropped the pins. So right here and right here, you can see my yellow pins. Mm -hmm. And that's where the bodies were found. Um, um, I do remote viewing as well. Um, uh, picking oh, yeah. up stuff. Yeah, uh, I'm getting the sense that there's some kind of a gorge and the other two bodies went over the gorge and went down from a long height. That's quite, why they... Quite possibly it could have been, could have been. But yeah, they were, they've never to the state been found. And I, I don't think they ever will be. There are some people that you just can't find. And there's some people that don't want to be found. Like I, when they walk off and commit suicide, they don't want to be found. So sometimes it doesn't matter how hard I'll work on a case. If I, if I can't see them in here and connect with them, I'm, it doesn't matter how much I look. If they don't want to be found and they're not presenting themselves to me, there's nothing I can do. So yeah, there have been cases where I haven't seen anything. And then there's others where it's like boom, 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 boom. Um, I worked a case out here in, well, I should be careful with what I say, in Alberta. And I was able to provide all of the evidence for them to, or tell them where to look for the evidence to be able to pin the murder on the suspect. So I've done that a lot. When cops are at a dead end, I usually get called in. Homicides, um, everything from a general missing person who ended up drowning in the river. So this, for example, um, I guess I'll, I'll kind of, because we're recording this, I'll just hide the personal information of the yeah. police officer. But like, that's, an RCMP recommendation that says I, I actually have worked with them and they'll continue to use me and that um, I did successfully find missing people for them. Yeah, Johnny posted that yesterday, so I saw that already. I'm like, people ask... You need to wake up and realize this stuff is real. Yeah, people ask, well, prove that you're a psychic. Tell me my birthday. Tell oh, me my... Oh, I know. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> it's like that. Oh, I will tell you, though, I did predict my, my client winning the lottery right down to the day that she won it. So I had seen her back in, I don't know, like July or June or something of that year, and I wrote down two dates. I said, December, or sorry, November 27th, you're going to buy the ticket. December 2nd, you're going to find out that you won. I wrote the two dates down. And she won right down to the day. And it was a little. It was $7 million. $7 million. Yeah. I predicted. Yeah. I like, predict. That's the stuff that keeps me up at night going, okay, what's the math on that one? What are the odds on that one, people? Because it happened. Same thing with 26 missing people. It happened. I'm very, very hung up on proof when it comes to my ability. I think it is my, I think it's part of my purpose is to show people, oh my God, you guys wake up. This stuff is real. Cause yeah, there are fraudulent people out there that are shysters that'll, you know, say the same thing to everyone and take your money and run. I'm not like that. I have a 100% money back guarantee because I would never want anyone walking out of my office thinking that was a scam. Same thing with my missing person cases. I know the police use me because I do it for free. I never, ever, ever, even when, and I have won awards where I could have awarded the money. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I don't, it's donated. I don't want to touch it. If God gave me this crazy ability to be able to find a missing person, I honestly feel that it's my God given duty. I make enough doing readings. I don't need to charge someone in their worst time of need. So I've never charged a police officer, a family member, nothing for a missing person case. And the other thing too is when it comes to a missing person case, I could be wrong. What if I'm wrong? And then I charge for wrong information? No, because there's sometimes they don't come through. 
right? So I just, I play it safe and I'm like, nope, I will do this because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. I mean, with my friend, she's a healer and a psychic. She um, knew she had a stepsister somewhere in the UK, but not sure specifically where. Uh, yeah. And we did kind of a shaman ceremony because I'm trained in shaman, Native American cool. shaman. Yeah. So, yeah. and psychically, I also pick up, picked up, she lives somewhere near the ocean. They have a holiday home, how much children, blah, blah, blah. And that my friend went on a find my sister website and wow. matched up with the sister in that particular the area. You gave? Yeah. So that's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And she's like, she has that certain amount of children, boys, wow. girls, exact same info. Mm -hmm. It matched. Um, and then I had another friend who's like, oh, I'm buying a house in Costa Rica. I'm like, it's going to, going to cost you 125,000 USD. And I, I saw it floating above her head in neon lights, the numbers. When she bought the home with taxes and everything, 125,000 USD. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's out there. It's in the matrix. You know how to plug in. That's I, I awesome. just... I just see it. Um, yeah. It's the same thing with me. It's not like I hear some disembodied voice inside of my head or see dead people walking through walls. It isn't like that for me at all. Thank God. That would scare the crap out of me. Um, but it's like a memory. I, I would describe it as I've read your book. I've watched your movie and I'm just telling you what's in it. Cause it feels like a memory. It feels like been there, done that. And I knew exactly what you were wearing the day that you did that. Cause I see it so literally, um, that like, I'll even see what they're like outfits and stuff. Um, yeah. The gift of visualization. My mother, I think actually greatest thing that she did was she would tell us stories that didn't have any pictures or she'd tell us no, visualize it, make it up in here, see them, see them in your mind's eye. So she'd always read us books that didn't have pictures. And I think that that was a really, really good thing that she did because it opens up that third eye. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like I do see dead people and extraterrestrials. Do you, do you see them like walking through walls and stuff? Yes. That kind of, ooh, see, I, ooh, I'm glad I don't see it that way. That would scare the crap out of me. It doesn't scare me. I mean, I grandma in 2007, she passed away and she came to me a week later in her spirit form and she said, ask them why. I'm like, what do you mean? Ask them why? Ask them what? Why? She's like, you'll know down the road as you get older. I was about 27, 26. Yeah. Um, just started working as a library technician, permanent job. Um, and she's like, ask them why? I'm like, what do you mean? Ask them why. She'll, she's like, you'll know. So about 14 years later, I started learning Reiki, crystal healing, uh, magic, shamanism, psychic development yeah. with several different teachers. And I always kept asking my teachers, well, how does this work? How does that work? What is this? So grandma was saying, ask them why 14 years down the road. Yeah, makes sense get trained for a different job just in case yeah. for a healing job. So that's what was what grandma kept hinting at. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Spirit has a way of getting their messages to us, especially when we need to hear it. So that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. So, but you also do other stuff other than the psychic work, right? I do. So I do a bunch of different stuff, I guess. Um, I teach meditation classes. I teach psychic development classes. And because of lovely COVID, um, I'm going to be doing a lot of it on Zoom. And I'm actually having a class on April 4th, this Saturday at 4 o'clock. You should jump on and, and watch it on what actually is going down. What is happening right now in our world? How do we personally shift through this? What this means for us? What Mother Earth is trying to tell us and the spiritual meaning behind COVID and how to get through it? Um, and what's next? So, and I'll be going over ascension symptoms, what to look for, uh, how to be able to keep balanced and keep your peace through this time. So I'd love for you to join us if you can on, on Saturday. Sure. The, more, the, the more the better, because at the end of it, we'll all do a little Q&A and a little meditation to close and we connect, even though we are virtual and regardless of if even this 
is taped and someone goes to watch it in two years from now, they're still going to feel our energy, the energy from the matrix that we're bringing in and just having this conversation. Right. So the energy is it's there. And I believe that that's what we as psychics are plugging into the recorded energy. It's already there. It's just, we are constantly processing things in the now. Mm -hmm. But obviously on the other side, there really is no such thing as time. Oh yeah. You asked me what I did. Sorry. I get really bad ADD. Um, Okay. So I teach psychic development classes, meditation classes. I do have international retreats. I do have a beautiful, amazing Sedona retreat that's full and ready to go for eight, uh, for May 18th. But unfortunately I think it's going to have to be canceled. Um, uh, where I go and we do meditations in the vortexes and we do energy healing in the vortex and stuff. The energy down there is amazing. So I teach that stuff. And then on top of that, I do have a Rife machine and a vibra acoustic sound healing table. Did you want to see the room? Sure. Okay. One second. I should have, I should have done this on my phone. It probably would have been easier. That's okay. You have a bigger picture. You can see better on here. Oh, good, good. So this is my rife room. It's a little bit dark. I had to turn the light on. Hold on. So this is the Vibracoustic Sound Healing Table. Down here, these blue boxes. There are the Rife machine. Two therapies in one. The Vibracoustic Sound Healing Table. And what it does is it actually plays music where all the vibrations that are embedded into the music, so binaural beats are in it. Um, so we'll say like 936 for joy and vitality, 528 for love. All of those healing frequencies are embedded into the bed's music. And so there are, um, I think, four acoustic speakers that are underneath, and the whole bed vibrates to the music and the vibrational frequency goes through you. And so it's two different types of vibrational therapy together that I thought, what a great way to heal and relax at the same time. So when you get off the bed, it feels like every cell in your body is vibrating. It just, your whole, everything vibrates because you've been laying on vibrations for an hour. And then the Rife machine, if you think of the way doctors get rid of kidney stones, I know I said this to you earlier, but I'll just explain it again. Um, what they do is they match the vibrational frequency of the kidney stone. It oscillates, it blows up, and you pee it out. It's all vibrational therapy. So a Rife machine does the exact same thing. It's got over 40,000 different ailments that are plugged into the database, and you plug in the frequencies, and the machine takes care of the rest. You don't feel a thing. You have straps um, around your ankles and your ha- and your feet, ankles and hands. Um, or another way to do it is with two poles, um, one in each hand, and the circuit goes through you or the, the frequencies go through you. And you can use it for everything from uh, nerve regeneration. That's how I was telling you about my legs. That's how I got all the nerves back working in my legs. Um, everything from warts. I'll show you some pictures just so you can see the before and afters of what we've worked on with, um, with clients. So this lady, that's a wart on her chin. That's not a boob. That's a wart. Seven years she had that on her chin. We did four Rife treatments. This is what happened after the first treatment. You can clearly see it's like in half right? Mm -hmm. That's what happened after four treatments. And it's out of her body because it kills the virus that creates the outbreak. It goes after whatever, like the pathogen or the virus. Um, And since it can't feed the wart, the wart dies and falls off. Here's another gentleman who, um, it was cancer. And I, I didn't want to work on him, to be honest with you, because I'm a business and that's kind of scary. Um, but his doctors had told him, go home, get your life in order. There's nothing more we can do for you. So I couldn't say no. And so this is one big cancerous tumor here mm. that wrapped around all underneath and was slowly choking him and came out the other side in little nodules. You can see how big it is right? That it even folds the skin in. Well, 
for example, you see how big it is there? That mm -hmm. hole, this wall it right there. Look at that. Almost yeah. looks normal. Yeah, exactly. And it is normal now. And those were inoperable tumors that I almost said no to because I was scared. So it and works. It works. Cancer can absolutely be blown up through vibrational frequency. Of course it can. And that was the same thing with this COVID stuff. Like everything is a vibrational frequency. Find where it vibrates up and then blow it up. With Rife, it doesn't touch anything else because your eyes vibrate at their own frequency. Your epithelial cells uh, in, in your lungs or all of you, it vibrates at its own frequency. Everything, just like a fingerprint, has its own unique resonance. And no two frequencies are the same, right? So that's why it, it, if, if I'm treating someone for lung cancer, but they have breast cancer, it's just going to pass through them. It won't work for either because it's not the right frequency. And it, it won't harm anything because there's nothing that it's hitting. And uh, I've heard that there's a lot of different Rife machines. So which one is the one that you have and where would you get it? So... GB4000 is the one that I have. Um, and I'm, you'd probably have to do your homework online. I'm not sure because it came with my shop in 2011. I bought a holistic wellness center in Calgary and it came with it. So, so it's the GB4000? Yeah. Yeah. GB4000 Rife machine. Okay. And there's two machines, right? Yeah, two boxes. One is the frequency generator and then one is like the amplifier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the spooky, the spooky two, have you heard of that? The no. model? There's another model out there that's a lot cheaper, but it is not friend, uh, user friendly by any means. It's not user friendly at all. You would almost need to be like a geophysicist to figure it out or something. Um, Cause I have that model and it's, it's tough and I don't even know if I'm using it right. But the GB4000, it's so simple. You just punch in the codes and away you go. The, the thing does it for you. So, Yeah, so it could be good for cancer. It could be good for warts. It could be good for anything. Psoriasis. We have treated everything from anxiety and depression to nerve regeneration. My husband was in a bad accident back in 2015 and where... Uh, he was at one of the trampoline parks. Never, ever, ever go there. All the people listening and watching this, never go to a trampoline park. Oh my God, you think it won't happen to you? And it will. Um, we, uh, my husband was jumping and a kid bumped into him in the air. And these trampoline parks don't have any safety nets, nothing. They have a thin pad that goes along the outside of the trampoline. It's the same level as the trampoline. My husband from 18 feet landed on his feet on those cement walkways with this much padding. So they found his kneecaps six inches into his thighs and had to pull his kneecaps out of his thighs. So he was in the hospital. He should have been in the hospital for six months. He was out in one month. I put the Rife machine on him all day, every day, because he couldn't get out of bed, right? The doctor was astounded with how quickly he healed even his scars because there's ones for healing and regeneration there's ones for everything so even his scars like you can barely 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 even see it so i just i it's mind-blowing that people don't know about these therapies and we rely heavily on medication without realizing there's so much more out there i didn't even know as a nurse they don't teach you this stuff it wasn't until i owned my wellness center that I even knew about Reiki. I didn't even know what Reiki was before that, you know? So, but sometimes you need the big bomb to go off in order for you to make those changes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, for me, I'm trained in Reiki healing and in all three levels, but I also combine it with other energy healing too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is. And everyone who does, um, hands-on healing or bringing in that light and everyone has their own resonance signature. So it's not that necessarily, um, someone is stronger than another or, or it's so different. Everybody's light is so different and you do, you put your own flavor on it with the longer you've been in it. So that's awesome that you found your channel. Yeah. I mean, even 
people have asked me, like, can the ETs with their symbols come in and you add that to the healing? Like, sure, <laughs> I can. It, the ability is there. We do the connection. We do the healing work. And what do you do? Just put it into their auric field or etheric field? There, there's a symbol that got channeled to me that I drew. So I put the symbol on the Zoom. I do share screen. And okay. yes, I do make a connection between the symbol, the person being healed, and myself. And then I do put, the, put it in their auric field and their organs. And I do grab different energies from the symbol for the healing. Very cool. Yeah. Um, you know, when it, I just wanted to say this. Um, when I own my shop, there's a lady who did uh, aura photography. And speaking of symbols, she, I, I had heard that when you tattoo a sacred symbol on your body, that is now part of your energy field. It's now part of your body. You have activated the meaning behind the symbol. So I was really curious about that. And so we decided to draw hand at the flower of life on the back of my hand just to see, does it have its own energy? Does it take its own form? It did! It did! It looked like this. It looked like a tunnel of light coming out of my hands. So the reason why I'm mentioning this is it would be really cool um, for you to do something like that, either tattoo that symbol on you or put it on you somewhere or wear it as a jewelry or something and get something made. It'd be cool for you to have that on you all the time. Well, it's, it's their civilization symbol like it's and it's uh, it's huge like the thing is um i have autoimmune disorder so i can't have anything yeah, tattooed on me or anything i heard that <laughs> i heard that when you said i was like oh she's allergic yeah um i just i don't and i have sensitive skin so i don't want ink on yeah. me but it would be neat to like test that because it did. I just did ink. I just did it with ink. But um, it's interesting how they say, you know, because we're, a lot of people aren't careful with what they put on their body. They'll put like Tweety Bird. You know what I mean? And it's like, but what is the meaning behind that? Because the minute you interject meaning behind it, you've given it life. You've given it energy. Yeah. I mean, I can share the symbol with you right now. I'll just go in into my folders yeah, I'd love and to see if you don't mind sharing. Pull it, pull it out for you to, to see. Um, I just have to open this and go back into Zoom. Has Johnny seen it? Uh, no, Johnny hasn't seen it. So I'll share this with you now, so you can see. It's the the main one is the triangle. Oh wow. Yeah, and then it has all these other uh, healing things no, around it. I can feel the energy of that just by just by looking at it. So what what does it feel like to you? What's the energy? It feels very high. It it more. It actually feels. Um, it's got go a lot of golden Christ consciousness energy to it. It doesn't feel like alien alien it feels more like if it is then it's pretty loving because these are symbols that carry a lot of healing and a lot of love um and a lot of connective energy not coldness and from what i have heard of ets and stuff uh, they're not as friendly as people would like them to be i guess um, this feels a heck of a lot more love and light infused. Um, and it feels like it's got light codes in it. Like the swirls on the left hand side of the screen towards the bottom. Can I see the whole thing? Like, is that there's more to it? Yeah, this, this is basically it. That's the bottom. Okay. So those swirls on the bottom feel like. I don't know how to explain this, but you know the infinity symbol and then there's an infinity symbol inside this infinity symbol? Mm -hmm. From about there down feels like some sort of light codes. That's what they are, definitely. It, it's like a matrix of healing, healing, and healing. Totally. It totally feels like that. It's, it's overlays of everything and anything for healing, love, light, um, closure. 
I see a lot of whites and golds in this. Like the colors at, at are very light, light, even though I know that the the pen is blue. There's an energy to the colors that I'm seeing behind it. It's a lot of very lights and pinks and whites and gold and Christ consciousness energy, it feels more like. And they told when me I, to when I look at when I look at alien energy, a lot of it feels dark to me, to be honest with you. This does not feel dark by any means. And they told me to draw it in blue. Yeah, it's it's got a frequency to it. Colors have a frequency. Everything I mean, is energy. Yeah, everything is energy, like you said, and it goes up in the swirls. It's like it's like you're bringing it down. Yeah, yeah. Well, they told me it's the Solipsy Raw, so they're like grays, but they're not grays. They're beyond gray beings. Well, all I know, I, I don't really know what much about interdimensional beings and stuff. Um, it's not where I get my, well, it's not where I get my information from. Like, I don't go into those realms. Um, but that feels very healing. It does. It doesn't feel dark in any way or that you channel, what did I channel or anything like that. It feels good. Yeah. And it's, um, this is their civilizational frequency of who they are as a whole civilization that's love and light my dear that's all love and light yeah you tap into it and you can heal anything and everything in the body the energy they're healers they're they're set to be in the sigma star system on a huge planet so uh, i mean i've i've connected with them for my own healing and i've connected with them for other people's healing energetically online it through feel when it comes through it feels like life extension energies technology like um light encoded symbols it's 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 um organic technology that comes if you don't mind me asking when did you channel that um this was about a month ago for with somebody i worked interesting that's interesting because i've 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 just seen a lot of stuff with light codes with it about a month ago. Um, Johnny and his journey through Egypt and England and stuff, he had light codes around him. So that's why it's like, oh, where did I see that? Oh yeah, it was around him. So it's, it just, it's interesting because like even with the crystal grid, all of it is connecting. It's, it's bringing that upgrade and anchoring it into mother earth. I think that, it is a time of light workers unite and there's no such thing as coincidence. No, definitely not. And I mean, um, whenever I connect with the Solipsy Ra, they've showed me how to draw organs with symbols on them, like heal organs, individual things, aspects energetically. Because I don't have a rife machine. I, I heal just with pure energy. Very cool. Yeah, so like they, they had like uh, four different organs that we were working on. Okay. Yeah, so sometimes different symbols come in. And I had white matter lesions in my brain from implants, Neuralink implants. Oh, wow. Because uh, I told you I had been in the secret space program on Mars in yeah. cybernetics labs. So those etheric gold nanoparticle implants were left in my brain. So I, and they were leaking gold. So I contacted the Solipsy Ra to show me how to do psychic surgery to remove yep. those implants. And they're like, well, here's the healing uh, symbols that look like antennas and here's your implants. So they have me draw all that out and then use the healing symbol antennas to remove the implants. Wow. That's pretty cool. And it's, what's interesting is as you're describing it, I can see it. So, wow. Yeah, there, there's images. I have those original drawings. So I can send that to you if you're interested. Yeah, that'd be really neat to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's, that's really cool. I can feel the vibration coming off it. And, and they're pure light. They're, even though they're like fourth, fifth dimensional beings physically on a planet, their minds feel beyond that. Yeah. Like, there's something more than grays. They're much more. I don't know much about that whole world. I, I 
can't claim to know anything actually. So maybe I'll learn a few things from you then. That'd be awesome. Even I don't know much about them. They're just, I get like small visuals of what they look like. They concentrate more on the medical energy healing that they do and the connections they make with people that are of the positive vibration to bring forth the healing that they do. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know much about them as a civilization. I know they're on some planet in the Sigma star system and that they work in healing enclaves. Like there's 20 of them at once. Oh, wow. Connecting with me psychically to the symbols and to the person to heal. Have you ever heard of John of God? Yes. It, it makes me wonder if, um, it makes me wonder if he's one of them then. You know what I mean? Like just because of the way he heals. I, I mean, I know the gossip that's out there right now. I get it. But just because the way you're describing it, it just gave me a, for some reason I, I had a visual of him. It makes me wonder because he's a, I know he does psychic surgeries. Yeah. So. And they're like, when you connect to their symbols, the medical intuitive ability to see like within the organs, within the body, it's yeah. times 10. Wow. Then if I'm just doing it on my own as a psychic and a healer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the amplification is times 10 better with the symbols. So I'm like, I'm just a simple psychic. They activate, they do, they do. And, you know, even back to the, the aura photography, I saw it where it, it, I could clearly see the energy of my own hand and then the energy from the symbol. And it was, yeah, it was really neat. And it's like, um, sometimes people ask, well, you're a psychic. Show me proof that you can do what you can do. What do you answer people like that? Um, I usually laugh and say I'm so beyond that. <laughs> I do. I'll start, I'll, I'll start whipping out the RCMP recommendations and say, okay, so did I murder these people? Like, cause I found 26 now I'm at 26. And so, I mean, and my, my name is on the cases. It's, it isn't just, she said this or called crime stoppers. It isn't that like I do ride alongs. Um, I'm in their system. I'll put it that way. And, uh, and that's tough. That's tough to even volunteer with them because the, the amount of background checks that I had to go through, my kids had background checks. Like they are very, very, very careful who they take information from and who they get involved with. Uh, a lot of police officers um, don't want to come out and admit that they've used me. I've come across real jerk um, police officers who are definitely skeptics. Um, but usually by the end, they become clients, to be honest with you. I teach a lot of police officers in my classes, whether it's my meditation, my retreats, or my psychic development classes. Um, and it's local police. I, I've also worked um, with all the way, for example, with the Historical Crimes Unit in Saskatchewan. I have quite a few cases with them on the go. So it's used... I'm used in, in, a biggest, in a bigger capacity than I think, I guess, the average psychic who could lay claim to this. Because a lot of psychics say that they work with police and, oh, I found a missing person. Pr just prove it then. Just prove it. Show me a recommendation. Show me the front page news that you were on. Show me. And there's not, I haven't seen anyone who could do that. So it's... I'm very, very hung up on proof. Um, so when people are skeptical, I don't even entertain it, to be honest with you. I just go, okay, that's great. That's nice. <laughs> that's great. What do you want me to say? Because the thing is, is that the only difference between a skeptic and a believer, it's the experience. And I can't force someone to have an experience if they're not open to it, right? So it's, it really is. It's an experiential thing. And once you have had that experience and it becomes your truth, that's when paradigms change. So I think that that's my job is to just show people, okay, guys, look, because if this is real, what else is real? We got to start questioning. Is there a God? Is there such thing as angels? Is there such thing as spirit guides? Is there such thing as aliens? Like we don't know what we don't know. And that's all I'm getting at is we don't know what we don't know. So don't sit there and, and, and think, you know, everything talked about the skeptics, you know, um, if they don't know what they don't know. 
Yeah, and I mean, people ask me, well, how do you work with these ETs? How do you connect? All yeah. the proof that I can show you is the symbols because that's all I have from them. Yeah, but here's the thing. If it's your truth, it's your truth, and that's all that matters. It doesn't matter what anyone else says. This is your truth, and it will never become their truth unless they have a similar experience and go, oh, my God, that's what she was talking about. And a lot of them won't because they're not open. They're not vibrationally open. They're not mentally, psychically open, things like that. Like there's a lot of normal people or people that are very closed. And then there's people that are naturally open. I truly believe that every single one of us has a psychic ability. We all, it's in there. Absolutely it is. We've all had a hunch that something was going to happen and then it happened, right? Well, that's the beginning of it. There are some people who can, um, you know, play like Mozart. And then there are people that can't even do this on, on a piano, right? So you got to understand that it, we're all just at varying degrees on, in our development, in our learning. And, you know, it, it's, sometimes it is beyond people's comprehension. And then there's a lot of people that are opening up to it. My thing is, when it comes to me, I like to produce proof and I've built enough. Like I got a file of cases that I can show you when my, my reports were handed in and then when the body was found and where the body was found, just like this one, like those were exactly on. And that was only two of the bodies from that search. I found six that day. So it's not, and I'm not bragging. It's not that. It's not coming from that. It's coming from a place of, we got to wake up because if I can do this, what can you do? What can the next person do that they don't even know? It's like a person who's never played a piano before. You don't know how good you're going to be until you try. So just try because we all have it. Yeah. I mean, you showed me that image where you found them and I'm picking up that there's a gorge and the other two bodies went up over the gorge and fell somewhere and down from a height. Because you know what? I do have the full report on where the rest of the bodies were found. Because I have it as part of a recommendation from um, Wimberley Search, Track, and Rescue. Yeah. And so I need to find that. The other two bodies are fell off a gorge from... A huge height and yeah, they've, never been, they've never been found ever so oh they're in pieces they're not alive oh no no no! i know but that's what i mean like they will never no they're gone they, so unless they here's unless here's they the, find a gorge huge gorge so that was everyone who was in the house mm. so and I'm, one person got out alive I think it was this guy. I think it was this guy. This guy at the top got out alive, and then eight went missing. This is the one that's missing. I don't think this body was found. Which one is The that? little boy or girl. I can't really see. Uh, is, it, is it this one or this one? This one. This one? No, this one. This one? Yes. Um, you are correct. One of the kids, I'd have to look back and cause I, I don't remember. I'd have to look back at my report, but I know one of them was the kid. Yeah. One of them was the, that's was the kid. this, this, so, this little boy or I this think one's it, a little boy. This one's a little girl. I'm pretty boy. sure it was the boy. That the boy. Been, I'm pretty sure it was the boy that hasn't been found. And then the mom too of the little boy was the, the other one. That his neck. His neck was broken when he went over the gorge. I'm pretty sure he was dead by then. Yeah. Okay. But when he was falling, the, the neck broke when they went, when he went over the gorge. From what I understand, he was in the house when the house went down. So mm -hmm. I'm assuming that it, he would have been knocked unconscious before that. Yeah. Um, but, so that's the body that's not found? Yeah. Yeah, him and his mom. Uh, the broke there. There was a broken neck. The ranch where Carrie's house broke apart, separating Corpus Christi flood victims. So yeah, the house went in, and then Maggie, the McCombs dog, was found alive with her ID collar still on. So the dog got out, 
Andrew McComb, six, was found Wednesday and identified. Sorry, he was. He, no, hold on, Andrew. Oh, no, that was the other little boy. He was, he was one of the ones in here. Andrew McComb, I'm pretty okay. sure this, this body here that I found. Okay. And then it says, Randy Charvis Wall was found right there. Jonathan McComb was found alive about 10 miles downriver from the house. So that's the guy who, um, that's him who got out alive. Okay. And then Ralph Carey was found Thursday near Fox Road, which is the old father. Okay. He's one of the ones that I found too. But you know what the cool thing was about that one? So they FaceTimed me from the area because I kept describing where they needed to go, but it all looked the same because it was all washed out and it was all wilderness. Like it was kind of, um, there's not a whole lot of civilization. It was kind of like a vacation house, right? And so they're looking for markers. And in my head, it all looks a lot alike. So they ended up FaceTiming me and I was able to FaceTime them right up to the body. So that little, the boy they did find, this one? This one, Andrew McCollum, they found him. No, I'm I'm focusing on this one. He's not this one, or sorry, that's the little girl. This is the other little boy that I think has not been found. Let me just see. A woman's body was recovered Saturday morning. I'm pretty sure that was the Michelle. Oh no, Michelle Charba's body was found in Caldwell County. So she's the daughter of Ralph and Sue. So. I'm picking up that in, so it's right side bottom. It's this, I can't see in the image clearly. Is that a boy or a girl? This one's a girl, this one's a boy. This boy wasn't found. You're right, he has not been found. He's the one that went over the gorge with the broken neck. Probably, probably. I mean, I could see I'm that. I'm pretty sure it was his mother, Laura, that wasn't, yeah, that wasn't found, I'm pretty sure that it was her because I'm I'm pretty sure she is the mother of this child and this child yeah the little boy that I'm seeing the broken neck going over the gorge never found yeah he'll never be found but the cool thing was was I I, I told them like they, he'll never be found it's not no. it's not you it's not anyone um and yeah to this date two out of two um out of the eight have never been found well yeah I'm like I wasn't focusing, the, the, because the way he died was so traumatic with the broken neck, it's so small and tragic and going over the gorge, that's what the, I focused on the trauma. See, and it, for me, don't do that, because you don't want to pull that energy in, because you mm -hmm. look like you're going to choke back a tear, so mm -hmm. don't do that, because you don't need to feel it if you don't want to, you can see it like you watch it on TV. You I always feel it to go in you. But that's how I know it. I feel it. And that's how I know it's the truth. So I'm... But then you're having that energy flowing through you. So mm -hmm. it's, it's just make sure you clear it because it's I, Yeah, I'll clear it. I mean, it's not, it's just making me feel sad, but it's not affecting me to the point where I'm going to go and puke. No, no. But emotionally, when I tune into you, I can feel it. It made your stomach drop or, or that, that feeling of sadness, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. for me, it's kind of like, I, I guess I learned this in nursing to like, you got a job, got to get her done. You're, you're there for this. And so you just dive in and do it. And so for me, it's almost like I look at it as a puzzle or like a video game. I just, I got to find the, I got to find the body. I got to find where they buried the body. Um, but I mean, a lot of psychics do do that, where they connect with the emotions and stuff behind that. But that's where it's like, how do I describe that? I wouldn't recommend doing a missing person case if it, if it emotionally upsets you, because it's, it, would, it can be quite awful with the stuff you see. Like, um, I just, I, emo I wouldn't be able to do cold cases or dead people's cases I see too much like I see how they die why they died and I yeah. wouldn't be it's, yeah it, and it does it, it gets kind of gory you never know what you're looking into right mm -hmm. so yeah that um I mostly just tell people like this is what's going on with your life this is what you might need to do to change things 
this is what I see is happening to you and your family or dead. Yeah. Just more simplistic things. But I mean, I've seen dead bodies and a lot of blood and they never reacted to the bodies or the blood. Just somebody in an accident on the road was dead. There was a body. Oh God. And police were there. This and us just me driving home. This was just going home with my mom from work. And I saw it. I'm like, I didn't react to it. It, it Mm -hmm. um, I think it's the trauma of dying that faced me with the little boy, but seeing dead bodies does not do anything to me. I don't usually work on kid cases. I, I was a gerontology nurse and oncology nurse, so I never, I chose never to go into peds. And even with this, um, I've only ever worked one other child case they would that and i can talk about that case because they it's been she they know who did it she's been found the isabella Sellis case um that was all over the states that was a big case and yeah i did pretty good on that case i'll put it that way they, they it led to an arrest so good good but, uh yeah it's 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 interesting who will use psychics it really is um, I've done everything from oil and gas to judges, police officers, lawyers, like it isn't just a person looking for a fortune telling, you know, well, I mean, you're the same. sorry, I didn't mean to jump in. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not fortune telling. We do have yeah. real abilities. Totally. So, so with great abilities come great responsibilities, how you do the work you do. For sure. For sure. And it's client privilege, confidentiality. What we do with people that we work with, it always stays private and confidential. Because mm -hmm. this is other people's lives that we deal oh, with. Sure. Yeah. So professionally, we can't do really... remember anything after? I don't mm -hmm. remember anything after. I find that my memory is crap. So like faces even, I could, I could do a reading for someone at two o'clock and by four o'clock bump into them at Safeway and not recognize them. Like it's, it's like they're gone. Do you remember your clients' faces and names and stuff? I have photographic memory, so yes, I do. Oh, nice. I'm bad. I don't remember their faces. It's like complete amnesia. You're lucky. <laughs> it's best not to remember that stuff. You have to let it go when you finish with it. You let it go and you, like, I just let it go. Yeah. Yeah. I might, yeah. I might remember them, but I am not going to be going over it over in my head over and over again. I cleanse, clear it, delete it out of my system after the session. Mm -hmm. And I cleanse myself before the session and after the session, just make sure nothing is in me or around me. Absolutely. Good, good. So, okay. I mean, like, like you said with that little boy, it's best not to remember that trauma of how he died. It's best to let go of that. I mean, it's, it's gory how he died, but he's gone. Yeah. There's nothing we can do. No, he's no. gone. That's it. So let it go. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I have, a, I have a psychic friend and a healer, but we chat in private. So this is great for me to talk with you, somebody who's out doing the work and is willing to discuss how this is done. Yeah, for sure. I have no problem with you picking my brain. Well, thank you. It's like, um, it's good for the audience to see what it's like to be in the life of a psychic. Yeah, well, it's not, it's not too much different other than your kids can't lie to you. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you can, you can sniff the BS off of, off of them. So they're good. We're, we're good in that sense where we're super close because of it. Do you often like sometimes sense wise around people, like oh. adults? Yep, totally, totally. I can feel it when someone isn't, isn't telling the truth or, um, I get a play-by-play. -play. Like when people start describing stuff, I start seeing it anyways. And so I've, I've often said, whoa, back up. That didn't happen that way. And, and correct it. Thank you so much for your uh, beautiful um, insight into what it's like to be a psychic. Absolutely. And thank you so much for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. Okay. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. Oh, I, should I mention my website? Just in yes. case. And
curious. Yes, okay, please. Okay, so it's just my name, www.patriciamona.com. Excellent. Thank you. So that's how people can reach you by the website. Totally. Okay. Have a good night. Thanks. You too. Bye. Bye.